anticipates that the rapture must occur before the tribulation period. And the book of uh, Thessalonians is a doctrinal book which places an emphasis on the return of the Lord. And here it's taught that uh, it is uh, dogmatically taught that the Holy Spirit will leave the earth and then the Antichrist will come on the scene and sign a seven-year uh, uh, covenant at that time. The second Greek of Daniel here in your notes uh, tells us about the seven-year period. If you have your Bibles and need to look at it, Daniel chapter 9 and verse 24 through 27, it's also, it's right here, you know, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people, upon thy holy city. And it goes on and uh, talks about uh, those 70 weeks, and those weeks are speaking of a period of a seven-year uh, time frame. In other words, when it says 70 weeks are determined upon the Israel and the Israelite, it talks about seven and three score and two, which is 69 of those seven-year period. 69 times 7 is 483 years that have already been fulfilled. And there's one seven-year period that has not yet been fulfilled. And the word weeks there, we find it in uh, Numbers chapter 14, verse 34, where the, uh, uh, they talked about uh, 40 years, uh, uh, one, uh, uh, it says uh, the number of your days, even 40 days each day for a year. And then in Genesis uh, 29, verse 27, fulfill her week. We will give thee also this service which thou hast uh, shall serve with me yet seven other years. And Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. That week was a seven-year period. So when the Bible speaks of these 70 weeks, it can be speaking of a seven-day time frame or a seven-year time frame. In this case, it's seven, uh, seven years, a seven-year period. So here in Daniel, you have right here in your notes, 70 weeks are determined upon Thy people upon thy holy city, that's Jerusalem or Israel and the Jews and the and Jerusalem, uh, to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, uh, to make a reconciliation for iniquity, bring an everlasting righteousness and seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. And now he tells you how these seventy-seven year periods will come about. Know therefore and understand. He's going to give you a time frame, just as if you were to take a stopwatch and tell you when it's going to stop and when it's going to start. He says, know therefore and understand that from the go going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem uh, around, uh, I don't have the date right off, uh, I believe it was 434 B.C., it was a commandment by Artaxerxes to restore and to build Jerusalem. From that time frame until Messiah is cut off shall be seven and three score in two weeks. In other words, seven plus sixty-two, a total of sixty-nine weeks, sixty-nine seven-year period. Four hundred eighty-three years. Uh, Sir, Robert Al uh, Sir Robert Anderson in the book The Coming Prince has uh, laid this out and showed how the four hundred eighty-three years was fulfilled to the exact day. If you like to study further on that, you can see that. And then it says, uh, after three score and two weeks, after the last sixty-two, which is the end of the sixty-nine weeks, Shall Messiah be cut off, and, uh, but not for himself. The people, that's Rome, of the prince that shall come, which is the Antichrist, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The Romans destroyed uh, Jerusalem in 70 AD. That already occurred. And then it says, and he, which is the Antichrist, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, for one seven-year period. And so the tribulation period is a seven-year period, and that seven years... That stopwatch will pick up again when the Antichrist, when he confirms a covenant with many for one seven-year time frame. And so here you have the 70 weeks of Daniel, where the 69 weeks have already been fulfilled. And uh, it tells us, from the going forth to restore the build Jerusalem until Messiah is cut off, 69 have been fulfilled. 69 seven-year period. 483 years have been fulfilled. There is one 70th week determined upon thy people and thy holy city. And that seven year period begins when he, the Antichrist, signs a covenant with many for one week or one seven year period. And so there you have the time frame of God dealing with Israel. Now, in the New Testament, you have God's time frame or God's dealing with the church. And that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Jesus promised, and it was the promise of the Father, but Jesus told about it. 
John the Baptist told about it, and it was about being baptized by the Holy Ghost. And this baptism of the Holy Ghost was going to be uh, was promised in all four Gospels and the Book of Acts. In Matthew, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost with fire. Mark chapter one verse eight. I baptize you with water. He, Jesus, shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Look. Again, baptized you with the Holy Ghost. In John chapter 1, it's in there again. And then in the book of Acts, just before Jesus ascended for the final time, he said, John truly baptized with, with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Now, the Holy Ghost was a gift to all believers in the New Testament. If they got saved in Acts 2.38, they received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Acts 8 verse 9 says that, if you have not the Spirit of Christ, you're none of His. And so in the New Testament era, when you got the Holy Ghost, it was a gift, and it was going to be one of indwelling. Jesus promised this indwelling in John 14, verse 17. It said, The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, it says, He dwelleth with you while Jesus was here on earth, and He shall be in you. And so the, the indwelling Holy Ghost was going to come in the near future. Uh, John 14, verse 16, I will pray the Father, he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. So once the Holy Ghost indwells a believer, he stays with that person forever. Now, this uh, ministry of the Holy Ghost coming to earth was uh, promised by Jesus after he was glorified. In John 7, verse 38, 38 39, he that believeth unto me, as the scripture has set out of his belly, shall flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe in him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. And so the Holy Ghost was promised to come down after Jesus Christ was glorified and went up to heaven. And this happened after Jesus Christ was glorified. Uh, remember? In Acts chapter 1, verse 3, he was seen of many for 40 days after his resurrection. And then 50 days after Calvary, the day of Pentecost, uh, the day of Pentecost uh, uh, was on a Sunday. That 50th day, the Holy Ghost came down in Acts chapter 2. The Holy Ghost came down. Acts chapter 2, he came down to uh, the Jews in Jerusalem. In Acts chapter 8, he came down to the Samaritans. Uh, in uh, Acts chapter 10 to the Gentiles and Acts chapter 19 to the uttermost. But the bottom line is the ministry of the Holy Ghost coming down to indwell believers came down in the book of Acts and his ministry today is to indwell believers and to hinder the work of iniquity. Uh, this ministry of the Holy Ghost leaving the earth will occur just before Antichrist is revealed. And that's found there in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Notice uh, it says in verse number 3, Let no man deceive you that by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And the man of sin be revealed. That's the Antichrist. The son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you think, these things? And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. The mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, and then, and then shall that wicked be revealed. That wicked, that wicked one, whom the Lord shall destroy with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. That one, even him whose working, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And so this work of the Holy Spirit, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The Holy Spirit is letting or he is hindering the work of iniquity through the lives of believers until he is taken out of the way. And so in the New Testament, we're told that the Holy Ghost is going to come down at the indwell believers. We're going to be baptized by the Holy Ghost. And how long will the Holy Ghost stay here? He will stay here until he is taken out of the way. When the Holy Ghost leaves this earth, everyone whom he indwells goes up with him. And say, what do you mean the Holy Ghost leaves his indwelling ministry? That, that which they got baptized.
baptized by the Holy Ghost was an indwelling. And when he leaves, his indwelling ministry leaves, and then, and then shall that wicked be revealed. And then shall the Antichrist be revealed. So will we know who the Antichrist is? No way. Christians will be gone before the Antichrist is here. And the Antichrist won't be revealed until after the rapture. And uh, so the, the uh, Holy Spirit here has uh, his ministry of indwelling. Uh, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we could title that chapter the revelation or the unveiling of the Antichrist. He's called the man of sin, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God without his worship. He sits it as God, he sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And the Lord shall destroy him with the brightness of his coming. Him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all signs and, and uh, powers and lying wonders. And people say, well, you mean, uh, how can people get saved in the tribulation period if the Holy Ghost is gone? And that's where the, the 70th week of Daniel comes in. Uh, the, the first 69 weeks of Daniel was in the Old Testament. And the 70th week of Daniel is the tribulation period. The, uh, the Holy Ghost will work during the tribulation period, the exact same way he worked in the first 69 weeks. He will work and convict people of sin and, and get people saved, but he will not indwell people during the tribulation period, just like he did not indwell people in the Old Testament. And so uh, this idea about the Holy Ghost being God and how can anybody get saved, I said, that's, that's a, that you just don't understand what the leaving of the Holy Ghost is, is he leaves his indwelling ministry. His indwelling ministry came down, and his indwelling ministry leaves. And then, after he leaves, then shall the Antichrist be revealed. And Daniel chapter 9, in verse number 27, it says that he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. The Antichrist signs that covenant with many for one week. When that covenant is signed, when the ink is dry, the seven-week period, the seven-year period of the tribulation period begins. And uh, the Antichrist is the one that will sign that he shall confirm a covenant with many. In the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. And the way he causes the sacrifice and the temple to cease is that he sits in the temple as God at that time. And so here you have this idea, the Holy Spirit leaves the earth, all believers go up with him, and then the Antichrist is revealed. Now, the tribulation period starts when? In heaven, it starts when Jesus opens the first seal, and the Antichrist is revealed in Revelation 6, verse 1 and 2. On earth, the tribulation period begins when the Antichrist signs a seven-year uh, covenant, or as Daniel called it, a one-week covenant. And so you have uh, the coming of Antichrist prophesied in Daniel chapter 9. He prophesies in Daniel 9, 7. Antichrist is prophesied uh, uh, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. The Holy Ghost coming is prophesied. And then in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Ghost coming is fulfilled. And uh, then in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we have the prophecy of the leaving of Antichrist. And uh, when the leaving of Antichrist is fulfilled, which is yet a future event, when that happens, then the coming, the fulfillment of the coming of Antichrist will occur, that has occurred in Daniel chapter 9 and verse number 27. And so if you put together the 70 weeks of Daniel and the indwelling ministry of the Holy Ghost and his leaving, and then what the Bible teaches in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the Bible dogmatically teaches that the Holy Ghost comes, and he who now hinders the work of iniquity, he who now letteth will let, until he is taken out of the way, and then, after the rapture, and then shall that wicked one be revealed. That Antichrist, that man of sin, that son of perdition, and the way he is revealed is by signing a seven-year covenant of the which is the 70th week of Daniel, which takes us to the end of the tribulation period. So here you have dogmatically how the Bible teaches that the tribulation period uh, is a seven-year period and that the rapture is a pre-tribulation.